Now, I know you're on Twitter, um, and I know you read a lot of the, the message boards and the tweets and so forth. They're asking for a lot of things. They want a, a lower-priced Xbox One. They're looking for, you talked about market expansion or, or games with gold. Do you have anything you want to tell us about that, or what are you thinking about that? You know, I know a lot of times people give nods to the different forums out there, the different communities of people. I will honestly say I learn a ton from listening to the feedback, reading the forum ideas. I saw just when this position, when I was announced the position, the first things that Phil Spencer should do as head of Xbox, there were a lot of great ideas there. That two-way dialogue between us and the fans will be important as we drive this product forward. I think it's gonna be a foundational element to the culture of this organization. I want the two-way dialogue. We hear what fans say, they have great ideas, and we should use that as an input to how we build our product. No announcements today, but know that the things that people are saying, hey, here's what I would like to see in the product that I'm so passionate about, those are really important things as we build our plans. So did you just copy and paste and put that on your to-do list? You know, I, it sounds kind of corny, but I'd say, yeah. Like, there yeah. were a lot of great ideas there, even today when people are, are giving us feedback about live and where yeah. live should go. You know, these are people who have been with this along this journey for many, many years, and they've, they've grown up with Xbox in their home and the, the great franchises that have been born on the platform that they've grown up playing, uh, and they are really important people in terms of building our product vision. The question is, does that really happen? I mean, we've heard Phil Spencer and Team Xbox say that they listen to gamers and that they've been hearing you and they've been watching and reading forums and reviews and all that good jazz. But does it really happen though? Since nobody else wants to investigate if this really happens though, how's about why? investigate if it really happens though and i know your first question your first question to be well king thrash how are you going to know what they read where they read or how they and read? the answer is more simplistic than seeing who's more successful in life. You see, during my investigations, funny things have happened. Hilarious, even. You see, you see this right here? You see this game, Rec Room. One, of, one thing that I was investigating for another video at another time was how much Xbox and Microsoft actually lies. Well, all of them, but Microsoft is the one that got caught in the lie. And that lie was how they pad all of their gaming lists that they have. Like, including Game Pass. Like, Game Pass, the number of games in Game Pass is largely padded. To the point to where it's, like, disrespectful. And come to find out, they also do it in their store. And... You know, almost every store does it. They'll have a deluxe edition and then a regular edition, right? But they'll have them all like lying next to each other. Microsoft spreads them out and then they'll do an online edition or say like Tiger Woods will have like three, four editions spread out through one section. And what's crazy is you will find Tiger Woods in like fighting games or RPG, you know, like just, you know, it, it should be in simulator, in sports, perhaps, but you'll find it in some of the strangest areas. And there'll be four or five of them. You know, Tiger Woods $100 edition, Tiger Woods $100 edition for the Xbox Series S, or, or the one for the Xbox One, or... You know, it just they just spread it all the way throughout to where it makes it a lot of extra stuff. Just to make it seem like they have more games than they actually have to offer. And it's strange. But still, the reason why this game right here, Rec Room, is because as I was going through all the different genres, it was this game here. This game that I found in every single genre. Racing, fighting, adventure, RPG, 
It was even in simulation. <laughs> okay. For some reason, this game qualifies for everything, even though it just says it's an action-adventure game. But it was just one of the egregious ones that they had there that was in every single solitary category in the genre sections. And this is where I found it hilarious because I happened to go to the reviews and this let me know exactly where everything happens. Not just for Microsoft, but it actually puts your finger on the pulse of actual Xbox gamers. And it led to the video today. Today I will prove that Microsoft reads this. But not only that, it'll also show you guys just what Xbox fans do and feel on this console. You see, what makes it beautiful is in the ratings and stuff like that, you cannot rate a game or review a game. Unless you have bought that game. Or at least you can't review it. I believe you can't review it or even score it. Unless you bought it. Unless you bought it or rent it. This is me pressing it right here showing you that it will not allow me to rate a game. This is Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on Xbox. I have this on PlayStation. I don't have it on Xbox. Never bought it. Tried to zoom in on it, but it, you know, it is what it is. But these are the reviews, right? But still, I cannot review this. Because I didn't buy it. Alright. That's just just to let you know that these are actual buyers of these games. These are people who bought the game and reviewed the game. And this is Rec Room Reviews. He goes, I got called a slur five stars. That's what that's what they say here. He goes, the trailer isn't accurate. I didn't hear any slurs. Here's a look at Mr. Sarlex. He gave this review this year, gave it five stars, and says he has cerebral palsy. He goes, I spotted a kimono dragon in the game, and I lobbed my petite wiener dog at it in hopes of ending communism. <laughs> these, these are people who have played this game. These are people who are on Xbox, and the thing received 273 thumbs up. Now, I'm not... <laughs> Judging any reviews, I think it's beautiful, wonderful, and awesome all in once. But just to give you a couple of, you know, the thought processes of these reviews, these are the type of reviews that you get. Clearly, this game has issues with people being racist or people uh, saying slurs and stuff and junk. So let's keep going. I mean, look at this. Real Xbox fans have a sense of humor. He goes, oh my gosh, or oh my goodness, five stars. Oh my goodness. I saw a person drop their grandma out of a car on the side of the road, and I accidentally ran her over, and she starts calling me racial slurs like, bro, I love this game so much. <laughs> Clearly, it's a, a kid-level game. And, you know, the children like it. I just want to give you an example of what people are saying about games, especially games that they like on Xbox. People who buy these games and take the time out to review and give Microsoft their opinions on what they are playing and why they are playing it. So then that got me to thinking I might as well go and find Xbox games, Xbox exclusives, especially for the uh, series uh, games that came out this generation and see how gamers who actually played these games who actually bought them um, Or rented them on game pass either or you can do it You can um, review if you do either or and let's see what they said about their the best games on the market Or at least their games that came to the market prior And boy were the results fantastic you see it's not like PlayStation where you can actually select a, a, a selection to where it'll show you, you know, PlayStation exclusives, console exclusives. Um, I, I couldn't find it on Xbox. It might exist, but I, I, for the life of me, uh, I couldn't find it through their clunky window systems. So, you know, it, it took me a while to get through it. It was a lot of problems. The store kept crashing. There's a lot of problems that these guys don't talk about with this Xbox. I promise you, man. I, the store crashed on me twice. 
right? In this one session that I was doing, it crashed on me twice, right? And this is me finding finding Forza and going down to the reviews for Forza. And the reviews got a 3.4. A 3.4. Now, the first one is a, a five-star given, you know what I'm saying? It was made this year. It goes, I love illegal driving. This game is awesome. I was able to violate 999,999 traffic laws without prosecution, prosecution, can't even speak English, because I'm somehow a national hero in Mexico with diplomatic immunity. So, I, you know, it takes place in, in Mexico, and he's saying he's breaking all these laws. That's nice, right? Good review so far. Why does it have a 3.4 if all these reviews are looking like fives? You got another one next to him. He goes, five star, go vroom. You can go vroom. And they gave it a five star. No, no, no real reaction to the game. You're just saying that you can go view vroom in a cute way, right? But then the more you get into it, the more you see reviews like this. Corny triple, well, corny tripod, I should say, 666. You got 403 likes on this three-star review. He goes, his progression was ruined, or it progression was ruined. He goes, I missed the days of being a nobody and driving my old VW Corrado to the festival. You know, a real rags to riches story. In this game, you're already a superstar. And get a Corvette, a Bronco, or a Super for free. There's no sense of progress there, which makes the game less fun for me. Very genuine review. While people listen to Metacritic, you might as well just go to Xbox and look at the re reviews from gamers that actually care about this game. The one next to him goes, bring Forza Horizon 3 back. Please bring back Forza Horizon 3. I really miss it. On a review for Forza Horizon 5. Still gave it five stars, but not satisfied with this new Forza. You got um, another person, bring back Horizon 1, please. He goes, I like it all. I'd like it even more if the original Horizon, the actual game, came back to the store as of this Horizon 10th year anniversary. So he, he's not saying he doesn't want five. He just wants Horizon 1. Do a remake for its 10 year anniversary. Clearly people are fiending for the old horizons. The guy next to him says, Japan next please. Please, I nearly, I love nearly every aspect of this game except the location. It's not a terrible choice, but the game is set, but a game set in Japan would just be amazing. The neon designs, the race, race culture would fit in so well and he is not wrong. Lord, he isn't wrong. But they chose Mexico. In the Mexican mountains with a volcano that you can't jump over. You know, people blame me, but these are people who are actually genuinely wanting this game to be a success. Want the franchise to be a success. And it continues to go even worse. The Master SS says, think twice. Gave it two stars. If the whole game feels empty with the same old rundown towns and nothing new. The guy next to him says, what happened? I've been a fan of the Horizon series for a decade now. I've grown up with these games. Perhaps that's what makes this so disappointing to write. Horizon 5 feels like, feels hollow and boring. This studio used to put in so much effort into these games. However, this installment feels like a cheap rinse. And I'm pretty sure he goes rinse and repeat. This is from a genuine fan, bro. I mean, this guy is, I've been playing it. This isn't, these are people who either bought the game or people who rented it, but people who actually played it on Xbox. These aren't fake reviews. These aren't, this isn't a review bombing. How do you review bomb on an Xbox? They have an Xbox. They have the game. They are telling you how they feel. And is Microsoft actually listening to these very, very detailed and concerning reviews and it's the gamers who are concerned like hey like what's going on what is this this game got a 92 on metacritic people were talking about people on on, on instagram and twitters 
We're all talking about how this game is going to get game of the year. It should have got game of the year. But then when you actually go and see the reviews of the actual game, the gamers who are actually playing it are saying otherwise. Let's continue. The very next review says, Two Star, not what Horizon used to be. Forza Horizon used to be a game series with great maps, interesting races, a great online community, and a game that gave you a sense of reward and accomplishment. The fifth installment, unfortunately, is none of those. The map is okay at best with huge stretches of nothingness. It continues, but, you know, I, I ain't got time to read all that. I'm just saying. And then 82 likes. Then you got the next guy, Greedy. I like this game a lot. I gave it four stars for some reason. It says, I like this game a lot, but it has some serious issues. This game and its developers have a huge problem with greed. I mean, just the, just standard, the, the standard edition is $59.99 plus tax is $64. And I've also heard that other editions are garbage. Sometimes don't even come with... Let me see what he finished. In at. fact, let me read the rest of the first one if I'm going to do the second one. Um, because he had a whole lot to say. So I'm going to start from the beginning. He goes, Forza Horizon used to be a game series with great maps, interesting races, a great online community, and a game that gave you a sense of reward and accomplishment. The fifth installment, unfortunately, is none of those. The map is okay, but with huge stretches of nothingness. Races feel very repetitive and get old quickly. There is no online community whatsoever, and you can only run into players at one specific part of the map. It is hard to get a sense of accomplishment when vehicles are widely overpriced and you're given scraps for doing races, events, skill chains, and etc. This currency issue forces you to buy from the broken auction house or grind for days to get one car that will sound the same as other cars in the game and will still get gapped by the cheating AI. As someone who has played a lot of Horizon 1, 2, and 4, I sadly must say this game is not the same quality or value as other games in the market. P.S. This next gen, in quotes, game still is still at a standard 30 frames per second. I believe he's talking about in quality mode. Then the other guy who said, Greedy, I like the game a lot. It has some serious issues. The game and its developers have a huge problem with greed. I mean, just the standard edition is $59.99 plus tax $64. And I've also heard that the other editions are garbage. Sometimes didn't even come with what they supposed to come with. And the Hot Wheels pack is like $40. So you can race a bunch of stupid demonic, demonic looking cars on a bunch of loops. And then call it a day. <laughs> also, you have to have Game Pass if you want to play online. Like, what the F, I already paid enough to play the game in general. Moving on, the next problem is after you hit, like, one level 120, it just gets boring. Like, they stop giving you barn finds. Like, I'm trying, like, I'm talking for weeks. And overall, they just stop giving you lots of things to do. So, after you hit 120, it's a wrap. And this guy, he gave it one star. It says, add cross-platform on and off optional. Too many cheaters. Too many bugs in the game that should have been fixed a long time ago. Devs don't care about hackers. It's just sickening. I don't trust PC players because 98% of them cheat. And it's not fair for those who are playing hard. Fix this ASAP. Microsoft responds. So this means this shows that Microsoft actually reads these. He goes, hey, man, hey there, please find a link to the for, for the support below where you can set up a ticket of one of our experts to get you back on track. So you must be able to take cross, cross play off. But he just didn't know how. But they are reading these things. Then he goes, two star. Why do I have to delete my tunes to play? I find this absolutely ridiculous. The other guy, one star. Do you like AI that consistently cheats? Or this one says, give. And this game, this game needs a lot more cars, especially Ford, Dodge, and Chevy. Like there's one Impala. Or this guy, game is dying. I don't don't get me wrong. It's not fun. One star. Online feels messed up. Two star. Forza Horizon Four better than five. Two stars, eh, it just keeps going and going with one star, one star, one star, one star, two star, one star. Then look, five star, Vroom. Why does that even, <laughs> I don't get it, Vroom, Xbox. It's the same one. And then it goes, one star, bad, one star, harder than, these are people who bought this game. These are people, these are Xbox players, Xbox fans, Forza Horizon fans, and they are all pissed off 
But you would have never known this because the, the media doesn't talk about this. The journalists don't talk about this. And that's what's sickening about this whole thing is that nobody is talking about it. And Microsoft sees the issues and does absolutely nothing about these problems. They are clearly looking at them because they are responding to these reviews. And they are only responding to the ones that say, oh, we're not going to fix nothing, but we can fix this because you don't know that we have crossplay uh, toggle that you can untoggle. Here's a link to show you how to do that. No, nah, that's it. They're not talking about the currency. They're not talking about the, the maps and, and how boring and how they messed up and how it's not a rags to riches story anymore. None of that is being talked about with them. So it's crazy how, how, is, how that's what we see in that. And that's just Forza Horizon itself. Let's check out the other games. Let's check out Halo Infinite. Let's see how Halo Infinite did. From Phil Spinsey, 3.1 stars, right? First one says, two stars, best cake ingredients I've ever tasted. One star, decade of failures. Look, King123451 says, two star, bro moment. And he goes, we hired people who hate Halo to make Halo. <laughs> this is, this is your friends. The other one goes, one star, regret, regret, regret. Dear humanity, we regret releasing Halo Infinite Desync. We regret turning it into a live service game and implementing microtransaction throughout it. We regret ditching split screen co-op to pursue game modes you didn't ask for, and we are def and, and we definitely regret that you I don't think I even scrolled down on this part. I, I really don't, but you get the picture, bro. Wait, like, hold on, let's keep going though. I mean, remember, this is their people talking to them, bro. This is their people telling them how they feel about these games. He goes, heresy, remove this filth. Halo Infinite broke my FOMO. Split screen co-op, <laughs> no co-op, such a shame. Let's read this one. He goes, I remember the days of playing Halo up to Halo 4 and Halo 5 was disappointing via split screen. Best and most fun I've ever had as a gamer with my friends since GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, and Gears. Yes, I am that old. Now that I'm a dad, I've been patiently waiting for a local co-op as promised to play with my son and only to find out it's canceled. It's crazy. The next one, devs gave up. You failed 343. Halo fans, honest opinion. Um, um, unfinished and unloved. Jesus. Disappointment to all Halo fans. Betrayal. Fire 343. Cancel split screen and now requesting a refund. 343 is a train wreck. Microtransactions is ruining the game. Damn, I was, I mean, just, bro, I, I, it's just on and on and on and on and on. And these are the games that Xbox gamers claim won them 2021. And it's, this is why I say that the people that we watch and see on Twitter and everything aren't real gamers guy goes dear santa give me a console with good games <laughs> that should let you know more than anything that they're vastly disappointed in the output that microsoft does they are so disappointed in them but if you look at the old ones 4.9 rest peacefully halo 3 i mean people are loving the old Halo. These, these, I'm showing this to show that it's not just people coming to hate on Halo, bro. They're not coming to hate on Xbox. These aren't people. Who, these are actual Xbox players. And when games are good, they thank you so much. That's that's the title, bro. Five stars. Like they they love this. They love even saying put this on Game Pass. They love Halo. They love. Games when games are great. And Xbox fans, prior to popular opinion, know when games are great and know when games are trash. The majority of the of the people who, who, like I said earlier, on YouTube, on Twitter, and everywhere else, don't really like Xbox or Xbox games because they don't respect them with the same respect they're supposed to get. What else was there? What else was there? Let's take a quick look at Redfall. I mean, even the people online wasn't wasn't given a uh, red fall uh any respect at all so i'm pretty sure um that would be consistent as the game is trash to most players let's see what it got oh a 2.2 2. 
Blast from the past. I can't believe Xbox 360 is still getting games. <laughs> Beauty of its time. So glad they ported a 2002 classic. <laughs> Look, bro. I mean, like I said, real Xbox players don't play, bro. One point. My disappointment is... is <laughs> they copied off a dude that reviewed food. Like, just the audacity to charge $70. Big facts. 500 likes. These, like I said, real gamers say real things and this is how real xbox gamers look they celebrate great games and they decimate bad games that's what real gamers do we don't praise great games alpha build for 70 dollars. maybe we should rethink this 70 dollar nonsense <laughs> like just they just keep going on but they're saying facts that they sound like everyone sounds like me in this, in this section it's only because I feel the same. The five stars. I needed a laugh. I had a bad day. I worked. I figured out. I read some reviews. Five out of five for the reviews. Zero of five for the game. He gave five out of five stars just for the reviews of this trash game that gave him more entertainment than the game itself. This is real Xbox players saying real Xbox things, expecting more out of Xbox. But here, here, I don't want to be all bad. It just, this is stay focused. It's just stay. This is keep. Let's look at Hi-Fi Rush, right? And let's see how Hi-Fi hi Rush did in the reviews. I'm pretty sure it got great reviews, and it did. Four point six, showing that it's not old players and new players having different thoughts and opinions. No, 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 no. These are people who already reviewed Halo, didn't like it. Reviewed Forza, didn't like it. Five stars across the board. Hope, nigga, hope it's all good. It looks, says it has soul. They are congratulating Tango Works. You know what I mean? Just, you know, out of the blue hit. I mean, people are liking it and they are showing Microsoft and communicating with Microsoft that they like this. And they're telling Microsoft, like, dear Microsoft, more games like this, please. They're literally communicating with them because they know Microsoft read these reviews. And it's just sad. That they, that they 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 even shadow dropped a game like this. Shouldn't even have been a shadow drop. It just it shouldn't have been because it would have had it. It needed more publicity. Shadow drop Pentiment. Don't shadow drop this, you know, because your gamers loved it and it showed. This is proof of that. Then it got me to thinking. Hey, do they have reviews for their services? Like, do services have reviews? So I decided, hmm, let me go to Game Pass, right? Something that, that nobody's talking about how the $1 deal is no longer for 30 days. It's only for 14 days now. Nobody want to talk about that either. But still, so that's neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Let's see how the reviews for Xbox Game Pass is. Let's see if they actually give you the ability to review their service. I mean, it's only fair, right? It's only right that we review the one thing that Microsoft focuses on, right? Let's let's, let's see how gamers feel about Xbox Game Pass. Hmm. That's strange. Oh, th there's no review section for Game Pass. Is it? Uh, maybe maybe they don't maybe they don't review um, services. Maybe services don't get a review section. Do they? let's let's check Spotify. Oh, wait, Spotify has a review section, but Game Pass don't. Why would Spotify have a review section and not Game Pass? Pretty strange, right? It's all good. It's all good. It's whatever, right? The the the, the next uh, game that we decided to review, or I decided to review, actually, is Hellblade. You know, a game that has a sequel up and coming. Um, Did... Xbox players who actually play this game like this game? Or, or are they more like the guys online who pretend that they like it? Oh, 4.5. Great game. 5 out of 5s everywhere. Great reviews. Fantastic. Because the game is a great game. I wouldn't give it a 5 out of 5. I would give it a 4. But still, it's a great game. And I understand why they would. This third-person, over-the-shoulder, narrative-driven game that 
people online say is bad, Xbox players actually like. Well, how do they feel about Sony games, right? Games that are published, or not, or not published, but developed by Sony, like MLB The Show. What do they give that? A 2.1, worse than Redfall. <laughs> Amazing, right? It goes, same, same, same boo-boo, new dude on the cover, which is accurate. He goes, hitting sucks. I don't know. I haven't played it. CPU pitching. Uh, developers, I guess they have a problem with it. It just, you know, they don't, they hate the game. They hate, <laughs> they, they dislike MLB The Show, and yet Microsoft spends a bag every year to have it on Game Pass every year. And these gamers don't even like it. And it, and it, and it, sh and it shows even in, in, the, in the thing that not too many people spend a lot of time on MLB The Show. And it definitely shows. Now, I'm not a big fan of baseball, but I know a lot of people who are on PlayStation. Backs up the fact that these Xbox players just don't like baseball games. They don't. And these are people who bought it or who rented it. What about Destiny? How do they feel about that? Destiny 2, uh, three stars. Um, you know, I, I hate this game. I play it every day. I <laughs> feel milked. And these are, these are, some of these reviews are, are, um, earlier than what, when Sony bought them. I think Sony had already had them in 2022. One star, free to play campaign demo, paid to play. Starting to seem like Xbox fans don't really like subscription games, right? I mean, you have Forza, they had a problem with how the subscription part of those games or the service part of those games they didn't like. They didn't like Halo service part of those games. They don't like MLB The Show. Um, that's a service game, but they didn't like certain aspects of it other than the services. And now we have Destiny. It's the same thing. Cash grab, cash grab, cash grab. You know, it's just, this is, this, this is, Xbox fans don't want games as a service, no matter how much you guys say that they actually do. You know, look at Fortnite, right? One of the most popular games as a service out there. 2.9. He goes, what about the Xbox players? I like the game and all, but how are PS4 players getting all these bundles for having PS4 Plus while people like us don't? Damn. Or he goes, old man Tater shot someone once. That's some weird stuff. City Skylines, Enhanced Edition. Every time a bullet exits the chamber. I didn't even stay on these long enough. <laughs> People just saying, nah. Um, one guy says, turn my son into a furry. Um, reviews are hilarious. Uninstall button. Um, I want the OG Fortnite back. Uh, PC kids, ranked and PC. I have AIDS. Wow. <laughs> Great. I had fun. <laughs> Forced. Damn, games, trash. I mean, there's a lot of low tier stars. Except this one. It goes five stars. Something are back. And then uh, one star bad. So there's a vast amount of one stars for these service games. But Microsoft is going the service way. They don't want you to judge their service. Because they've seen all these service games. Even the most popular ones have low scores on them. And people don't like it. Their people don't like it. Not PlayStation, not Xbox, their people. What about Call of Duty, right? Let's look at Call of Duty. Now, how, how do they feel about uh, Call of Duty and it's, you know, because Microsoft's buying them and everything. Let's see if it's a buy thing and they gave it good ratings because of that. Right? Another service game. 2.6. Disappointing. Bad game. PC hackers. Same dirty toilet, different turd. L. Fun game destroyed by PC players. Inconsistent gameplay. Waste of money. Shady devs. Insulting. Crossplay has ruined COD. Give game is still S word. <laughs> Gone forever. My review is deleted. What? My review is deleted. Disappointed. 3,000 devs and still trash. Isn't this, this isn't what I paid for. I mean, just piece after piece after piece. Just. They don't want service games over there. And it, it's Call of Duty is the number one selling game on Xbox. And all the problems that they have are things that have to do with the service, the forced crossplay. I, I can't believe 
Does Xbox have forced crossplay? Because I don't think it's forced on PlayStation, but it's forced on Xbox. And that was just the that was the I went to the both sides. I went to the 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 um, online only side, the the Warzone. And I went to the regular one, but it's all the same ones. So they no matter which one I went to, it would be the same um, um, reviews. So these reviews reflect the entirety of the game, being no matter what part of the game they actually played right one thing i did though this is i looked up gears right i went to gears right because the gears is the xbox one game and it was a popular game for xbox fans but things started to get weird things started to get sinister things started to get fake started to expose things Right, Gears got a 4.6, right? And then when you look at the reviews, it goes, add offline play, campaign to old, old Gears still better than the new Gears, day one Gears fan, one star. This game cured my depression. It made me realize I can go play a better game like Operation Raccoon City. Um, <laughs> it, it, things are being, like, like how is it? It says 4.6. It goes, Gears 5 drops war from the title in, way, in more ways than one. It's a great game if it came out and you have a memory of have no memory of the first four games. Uh, hackers ruining the game, uh, solid action shooter, four stars. Um, worked fine for me on PC, so it wasn't even on the Xbox. It was an actual. They were actually playing it on the PC and having a better because it had more support for HDR and stuff like that. Gears Five review fix. Read before deletion. I don't know what it is, but someone is fixing review ratings on Gears 5. They are having fake accounts and five star in the game with extremely basic reviews and deleting the one star reviews. Naughty, naughty. Now this is made back in 2020. This is from a gamer. 214 likes. 214 likes. And this is their own gamer saying that somebody is fixing the review ratings for Gears 5. And they're having fake accounts. Five star in the game with extremely basic reviews. And deleting one star reviews. Is that true? I mean, the game rating was 4.6, and so far we've seen a whole lot of one stars and two stars. How'd they get 4.6? Let's let's continue. Let's see. Let's let's continue. I mean, I can't. I investigate more into this, and you'll see how deep the rabbit hole goes. But you see, one star, two stars, three stars, five stars. I like this game. Wait, didn't he just say that? People are giving five stars in extremely basic reviews and deleting the one star. And then the first five star we come across is an extremely basic review. Wow. I like the game. <laughs> it's crazy. How, how is this a 4.6 when all I see are one star reviews? Personally, I like the campaign and high budget DLC. It was amazing, amazing beautiful on my Xbox Series X. So they even people are questioning how is this a 4.6? This guy gave it four stars and liked the game and still questioning how is it 4.6 with all these one stars. So they the gamers themselves are noticing, like, look at all these one stars, bro. Like there are a couple of two, fives, threes, you know, but then one, 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 one. Like just so many one stars, and it goes on and on and on and on. Yeah, how is it? A 4.6. I just hold the button. You can just see mostly all one stars. Like, that's how. Unless they're doing exactly what these Xbox gamers are accusing Microsoft on doing. They're deleting one star reviews and adding five star reviews with very basic reviews. Like, look at how much letters are in these. Look at how much typing is being done in most of these one stars. Not all, but one. Look at it. Five stars. Better Halo game than Halo 4 and 5. 
with Halo Reach Pack. And this is on Gears. Five stars. I don't understand why people gave it hate. It looks like you're making an excuse for this, for that review. Simply for saying, oh, why are people giving it hate? They're not giving it hate. It was fun story, great graphics, and fun campaign. PvV is not that fun to me. Four stars. Mm, that's a four another five star. Or higher, higher star. Five stars at least. Four or five? Like, because these mostly ones. Are these five star reviews really, like, less? Like, they don't, they don't really tell you anything on the five star reviews? It's a lot of one star reviews, bro. <laughs> it's 4.6. That is true. You're looking at it, looking through all this. That is a lot, a lot of one-star reviews. And the stores, discussion, microtransactions. Look, it's just yeah, the microtransactions were horrible. Look, five stars. Make number six, please. Five stars. Five stars. I love this game, and I like the campaign, and I love the DLC. Five stars. Perfecto. Get rid of the robots. Four stars. Best one yet. Looks and plays amazing on Series X. No frame rate drops. No freezes. Highly recommended if you want a plat with your fam. <laughs> yeah, bruh. It, it, I mean, if you just... No more advertisements. Four stars. I love this series since... Gears 1, but it got ads in it. Yeah, and then it's true. That one does have ads. And I have a video about those ads that are already in it. They have ads for Gears Tactics in it. But look at all these one stars, bro. Wait, hold on. Let's get some control here. Let's look up Forza Motorsport. Not, not Forza Horizon. Let's look up Forza Motorsport. The most recent Forza Motorsport. Let's see exactly how that went down. All right? Let me see. Let me look at the top and see how many. Five stars, 119,404 votes, and or reviews. Wait, how'd that make sense? I mean, look, I just read, right, it has 4.8, it has five stars, right? But I just read up top, it said 100,000 votes and reviews. But then when I come down here to the bottom, it says over double that at 26,000 I mean, I'm sorry, 269,593 up from the 100,000 that it had earlier. Well, not earlier, but at the top. So at the top, it reads different than the bottom. And this says 0% two stars and 0% one star. 83% five stars, 18% four. These do, these reviews seem funny. I mean, if you go back to the top, you can, you can see here that you can't buy the game no more. Like the game is out of the store and everything. But... Um, it goes 119,404, right? With five stars. And then when you go down, uh, you see 269,563. That, how does, how, how do you, how do you have uh, over double on this section? But then up there, it, it would seem like they did add a hundred thousand. <laughs> Cause look, and then when you look at it, you see like it says zero percent one star, and then you see a grip of one stars and two stars, and those both are at zero percent for this game. And people saying it turned for a worse for the worse, and that's crazy. I was robbed for a hundred dollars. People feel robbed. And these are, these are reviews from twenty seventeen. These are like old reviews when they first came out. These ain't new stuffs. No, 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 no. But 0%, and you see all of this. How does that make sense? How's this 0%? How, how, how does it look this crazy? There's just so many discrepancies. You got one part saying 100,000, the other part saying over double that with 200,000. Like, how, how does this? even make sense so i looked even further into it you see unlike most investigative reporters i go to the terms of sale these are things that keep them legally okay for the things that they do and it'll tell you exactly what they do 
with your reviews, how they use them, and what they can do to them. So let's go over them. First, let's find the part where they talk about what they do with reviews and how those reviews look and all of that stuff. Let's look at the reviews. Let's find this. Let me see. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Materials provided. Oh, I think this is it right here. Materials you provide to Microsoft or post in the store. Okay, here it is right here. Third paragraph of this section, it goes... Materials you provide to Microsoft or post in the store. Microsoft does not claim ownership of the materials you provide to Microsoft, including feedback, ratings, reviews, and suggestions. Or post, upload, input, or submit to the store or associated Microsoft services for review by others. Each, quote, submission and collectively submissions. So they're saying that they don't take ownership for the submissions that you put for other people to read like myself and what I'm doing right now. It continues. However, you grant Microsoft a royalty-free, perpetual, irrevocable, with worldwide, non-exclusive, and sub licensable right to use, modify, adapt, reproduce, and create derivative works from, translate, edit, perform, distribute, and display your submission, including your name in any media. If you publish your submission in areas of the store where it is available broadly online without, subscription, without restrictions, your subscription Submission may appear in demonstrations or materials that promote the store and or products. What they're saying right there is that we will use your stuff. We will edit your stuff any way we want. We will delete it if we want to. We will do whatever we want to do with it, including using your name and your submission to promote the store. And the way they promote is they put positive reviews up for the rest. That they, they, they would like show in a meeting like you know this gamer like this for this reason and that's what that's basically what they're talking about and then it goes they go they continue it goes you warrant and represent that you have and will and will have all the rights necessary to make any submission you provide and to grant the rights of that submission to Microsoft on a worldwide basis and for the duration of these rights. So basically you can write anything you want. Microsoft is going to take it and use it in any way they want to. They will uh, delete submissions. Like somebody said in the reviews earlier um, that Microsoft is deleting reviews and they are adding five star reviews. And as you can see, these things are happening. The numbers are funny. The numbers are wonky. They're saying 0% one star, zero percent, two star. In reality, um, you're running into ones and twos everywhere, and it's so open and prevalent that people are actually noticing it. Like, why is fours of four point six or gears four point six? But I'm seeing all these one stars. It just doesn't make sense, um, and it doesn't make sense because Microsoft is editing stuff, Microsoft is deleting stuff, Microsoft is adding stuff. Because it's their store and you've given up your rights by saying okay in the very beginning of the terms of service. So is Microsoft being dishonest with Xbox gamers even with their own reviews? Yes. They are leaving a lot of the reviews up, but they are also removing reviews. And they're adding reviews that have five stars in order to make their games look better than what they are. This is where we are in game. I don't know why nobody else wants to go over this type of stuff. But this is where we are. Microsoft isn't only being sneaky to their investors. They're being sneaky to their gamers. And almost everything that they've touched has been in a slimy way. Even to the part where they're telling you that they heard you. That they listened to you. They read these submissions the, your 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 opinions matter so much to them. 
That's what Phil Spencer said. Your opinions matter. So it's so important to what we're doing. And yet they are deleting your submissions. They are not responding to your submissions unless it's something that's redundant. They're adding and pretending that more and more people are liking things that they don't in order to trick you into buying a game. In order to trick you into trusting the reviews that it has to make you take that next step into buying a game. Even though other gamers who are just like you didn't like the game. It's King Thrash Gaming. Like, subscribe, don't like, subscribe. Hope y'all enjoyed the, the, the investigative reportings and finding out things for y'all and showing y'all directly to y'all face exactly how it's going down. There will be more of these. And no, not all of them will be on Xbox. The next one will be based on all three consoles, in fact. So, have a good you know, lookout for that. If this has a, a, a intro, it means I spent a little bit of extra time to do the intro. If not, then it means that I did not. <laughs> it is what it is, though. Y'all know what time it is. Hit that like button if you want more of these. As always, the factor. I'm not going to delete your likes. Hit the like button if you want more of these. Hit the dislike if you don't. Other than that, leave your comments and thoughts in the, in the comments. I'll let y'all later. Skin Thrust Gaming. I'm out.